Today, Precarious plays Metroid Prime. Oh boy, this, this, this took me by surprise. This is still the first recording session, and I've just been having so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> that we're just burning through the, the early parts of this game. Oh, oh. okay. Oh just my gonna, gosh. Just gonna scan ya. Just gonna scan you, friend. I have to say, I Flagra. loved this boss. I absolutely loved this boss when I was younger because I, uh, you know, I, I didn't play a lot of video games before um, high school, and I played, I started playing video games only in middle school. So when I saw this, it was coming at a time when most of the, uh, Entertainment in my life came from books and drawing. I did watch TV, but most of the time the TV that was around, it would go into reruns and I would get bored and I'd be like, you know what, I'm just gonna read some books. So, <laughs> so this monster happened to be a monster type that I had been drawing a lot of because I had recently learned about the idea of Trent's. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if it was a flower Trent instead and maybe cross with a praying mantis? And I would draw these like all the time. Like when I was in third grade, I went through like a I have to draw horses all the da damn time phase. And then at this point, I was like drawing all kinds of crazy fantasy creatures because that's what I was reading about. And this like with like the face and the, the scythe, I swear I drew this before I saw it. And then when I saw it in this game, I was like, oh my god, this is the coolest fucking place ever. Because you know my drawings didn't look like this. <laughs> you know? Not when I was, like, probably 13, 14, whenever I was playing this for the first time. I was probably, I was probably 15. So my drawings were starting to look okay, but not, not as cohesive and awesome as this. You know, but I was just like fascinated by this killer flower. Uh, so fascinated that I lost to this boss a few times. Um, you know, just from from goofishly staring at it, looking at all of its parts move, like admiring it. This is the one I was talking about, by the way, earlier. Mm -hmm. Because of the, it's it's in an array. Yeah. I feel like this was a failed Chozo experiment to try to process. I suddenly can't remember if it's Phazon or Phozon out of the environment. It's Phazon. I don't think we have it in the log, but yet because we haven't encountered it in the environment, we've oh. just encountered like little mentionings of it. The great poison that came down, you know, and yeah, maybe it, you know. Filtering water with plants is a concept that is well documented. Um, By science-minded folk. Yeah. Plants uh, do provide like a really good environmental buffer and they filter water. Sorry, I was just, I was trying to um, reinforce the connection. Oh, goodness. I don't remember that being able to... Look how large that. it is. And having you turn into a morph ball at this stage to do damage to it, it shrinks you further and makes the scale of this so much more impressive. It's great. That is, that's a great point. It's a neat trick mm -hmm. that they they make you, they force you into your third person mode. Uh, mode. Yeah. Your third person camera form for mm -hmm. this. Yeah, it just makes everything look bigger and much more impressive. And you get to see having the monster fall down and be still allows you to look at it a little bit more. That's one thing that I think that Metroid Prime doesn't get enough credit for, mm -hmm. is a lot of Metroid titles, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to this in just a minute in greater detail, but a lot of Metroid titles, they don't always add a whole lot to the game, like the series, enemy-wise. Right. Yeah, because haven't we seen Ridley, like, a, a million times? I think almost every game. Right? Almost. <clears throat> to the point where there's no way anyone could find him scary anymore. It's stupid, you know? Yeah, it's like, oh, it's you. Yeah. Great. 
and must be Tuesday. He's they've <laughs> had Ridley and they've had Mecca Ridley and they've had Meta Ridley and they've had a Ridley Parasite X clone. So they've had tons of different types of Ridley. Mm-hmm. So he's he's basically a running joke at this point. No one could be afraid of that guy. Yeah. Or gal. I don't know. Sort of ambiguous. Let's call it a thing and be done with it. Yeah. So here, see, fixed it. Nice, clear, lovely water. I think you can actually, because you have a spacesuit on, you can go under here. Yeah, that's so cool. Ooh, is there anything under there? I don't think so, and I'm not going to slog through it to try mm -hmm. to find out. I'm going to try to jump my way out of here and then get one of the first major power-ups of the game. Ooh, try it on! Try it on! It is the Faria suit! Yeah. Huh? Oh. Aw, oh, damn. Dun dun. Like, better close my eyes. It's real bright. It's sort of arcane. It's yeah. magic science. It is magic science. I love magic science because it just puts it to reality just enough to where I can relax enough to let the magic be magic. You know? I don't understand this, but I'm sure it works. For me, that is important. It doesn't make a great deal of sense why it doesn't bother me. Because... There is something about the style of this game. Like, you see this, right? Where it's got this really jagged edge. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was a very intentional design decision in the mm -hmm. environment, in the details, to try to play to the strengths of the GameCube. Yeah. To try to play to the strengths of the, the generation of games that this was happening in. Because mm -hmm. you can see it everywhere. You see like, yeah, these sharp sort of lines. Yeah, there are jagged, broken edges everywhere. And it gives them this kind of strength. It doesn't look fake when it... it Probably could. Yeah. Maybe if like the texture work wasn't wasn't as nice it is as yeah. it is. <sighs> I think that that's another smart decision. Is I think that um, Metroid doors are usually like circular. I believe. Yeah, but these are hexagons because the hexagons probably looked better. Yeah. But they do the same thing. They're familiar enough that I never questioned it until you just brought it up now. Ass, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for uh, breaking the game. Uh, so, a fairly realistic environment, though. It it feels very believable, even though it does have this sort of this rigidness to it. Mm hmm And, but you know, it has, like, the, the steam effects and the water effects and the heat effects. It has all of these bits of distortion on the environment and, and your suit. Mm -hmm. And, oops, maybe I can get through here anyway. Fishies! Can't scan them, Fishies. don't care. If it can't feed my logbook, I don't give a damn. Well, I think that they just spend a lot more care on the few organic things that are in the environment, you know, like that tickle grass. Oh no, I think they put a, a, an exhausting amount of detail into the environment. What I'm what I'm saying or what I was going to going to get at Having a weird gamey floating ass power up in the environment. Mm -hmm. Should be weird. It should, right? What? Having the Varia suit be there like that. Yeah. Should be weird. But for some reason. It doesn't bother me. You know, and it doesn't bother me either. It's even. It's actually very weird now that I'm thinking about it. Because at one oh. point. Heights. At one point. Did you get far enough to get the, the phase on suit? Uh, don't remember. What did it do? Turn purple? you, no, black. No. Hm. I got purple. Whenever you get the black suit, the black and red suit in this game. Yeah. You get it very sort of unexpectedly. You'll see it in detail when we get there, but you get it very unexpectedly from a boss in a very dramatic sort of organic way. You don't collect a power up. Mm -hmm. If I remember it correctly. Yeah. And that really does make the earlier suits feel weirder. And it, it's always it's sort of a mixed bag in the Prime games, because occasionally you are getting beam power-ups just, like, 
that are floating in the air. Like, I think we got the charge beam like that mm -hmm. in this game. But I think also in Metroid Prime, you get, uh, you get beam power-ups by, like, plugging your arm cannon into, uh, into some sort of, like, weird Chozo an ammunition system. Mm -hmm. But, um, so we're, we're about to go back to Talon Overworld, I think. We got, we got, like, the first major upgrade. How's that feel? It feels awesome. I love this place. We should come here more often. 